one of the things we talk about is bugs. Bugs in our personal operating systems and finding the patches to repair them. A lot of times when you talk to someone to say, okay, what, what are your weaknesses? What are those liabilities? Think about performance reviews you've had, comments that your spouse has said, things you know about your family, genetics, just the history. We all kind of know. We know these things that are probably behavioral traits, um, emotional, behavioral, physical things that negatively affect us and those around us. When people say, I don't really know, one of the first things I'll say to them is, okay, well, what is one of your greatest strengths? And they'll say, oh, well, it's this. My ability to communicate, my ability to analyze things. It can be any number of things. And what I say to them is, okay, take your strength and just draw a line right across. And over here is probably one of your greatest weaknesses. Hidden underneath almost every person's strength is a weakness. The person that's a great communicator who talks too much, who doesn't know when to stop, or who's not a very good listener. The person who's analytical and detailed and good at focusing on things, who can't see the big picture and doesn't know when to stop obsessing about something. If you're unsure of what one of your bugs is, think about one of your strengths and you'll probably find one of the bugs that you need to address. Here's a great video that illustrates this point as good as anything could. The failings of friends, colleagues and partners can be deeply galling. We got close to them because of their skills and merits, but after a while it can be the disappointing sides of their personalities that dominate our view of them. We look upon their faults and wonder again and again why they are the way they are, why so slow? Why so unreliable? How can they be so bad at explaining things or telling an anecdote? Why can't they face bad news straight on? Even worse, we feel they could change if only they really wanted to, if only they weren't so mean. It's at moments of particular agitation that we need to remember a theory called the weakness of strength. This dictates that we should always strive to see people's weaknesses as the inevitable downside of certain merits that first drew us to them, and from which we will benefit at other points, even if none of these benefits are apparent right now. What we're seeing are not their faults, pure and simple, but rather the shadow side of things that are genuinely good about them. We're picking up on weaknesses that derive from strengths. In the 1870s, when he was living in Paris, the American novelist Henry James became good friends with a celebrated Russian novelist, Ivan Turgenev, who was also living in the city at that time. Henry James was particularly taken by the unhurried, tranquil style of the Russian writer's storytelling. Turgenev obviously took a long time over every sentence, weighing different options, changing, polishing, until at last everything was perfect. It was an ambitious, inspiring approach to writing. But in personal and social life, these same virtues could make Turgenev a maddening companion. He'd accept an invitation to lunch, then the day before send a note explaining that he wouldn't be able to attend, then another saying how much he looked forward to the occasion, then he'd turn up two hours late. Arranging anything with him was a nightmare. Yet his social waywardness was really just the same thing that made him so attractive as a writer. It was the same unwillingness to hurry, the same desire to keep the options open until the last moment. This produced marvellous books and dinner party chaos. In reflecting on Turgenev's character, Henry James reflected that his Russian friend was exhibiting the weakness of his strength. The theory goes like this. Every strength that an individual has necessarily brings with it a weakness, of which it is an inherent part. It is impossible to have strengths without weaknesses. Every virtue has an associated weakness. Not all the virtues can belong together ever in a single person. This is a theory that can help us to calm down at moments of particular crisis because it changes the way we see the defects, failings and drawbacks of others. 
our minds tend to hive off the strengths and see these as essential, while deeming the weaknesses as a kind of freakish add-on. But in truth, the weaknesses are part and parcel of the strengths. The theory usefully undermines the properly unhelpful idea that if only we looked a bit harder, we would find someone who was always perfect to be around. If strengths are invariably connected to failings, there won't be anyone who's remotely flawless. We may well find people with different strengths, but they will also have a new litany of weaknesses. It's always calming to take a moment to remind ourselves of the incredible idea that perfect people simply don't exist.